Your Excellencies, friends and fellow Kenyans, tomorrow I will have the honor, God willing, to thank the numerous people who have helped and walked alongside us during these trying times. But today, on behalf of our family, I would like to first thank the singular group of people who our late father loved above everyone else. You, the people of Kenya. As a family, we have been overwhelmed by the outpouring of love, compassion, and support you have shown our family. You continue to carry us as a family, and as a family, we are indebted to you. Asanteni, Asanteni, Asanteni. We would also like to thank His Excellency Uhuru Kenyatta who has stood alongside us as our president and as our brother. We are eternally grateful to you and your family for all you have done to give us succor and comfort in these sad days and all you have done to ensure that our father is given the send-off befitting a former head of state. Thank you. I would also like to take this opportunity because maybe their excellencies will not be with us tomorrow at Kabarak to say a massive thank you to His Excellency President Yueri Museveni of Uganda who came and visited Muse in hospital and was constantly calling the family, inquiring about Mzee's health. Asante Mzee. I'll also like to thank His Excellency, the President of South Sudan, Salva Kiir, whom Mzee Moy was very fond of. Everybody knows that Mzee had a soft spot and a special place for the people of South Sudan. And I'd like to say thank you for him, His Excellency, for also coming to hospital and visiting Mze at the hospital. Asante, thank you, Your Excellency. Many have talked and written about my father as a statesman, a peacemaker, as a politician, as a leader of men. But today, I stand before you on behalf of my brothers and sisters to talk about the man who was our father. You see, despite the responsibilities of state that he carried on his shoulders every day, he still found time to be a wonderful, wonderful father. He loved his friends and he loved his family. Yet as a family, we accepted that he gave his life to something bigger than himself, the service of Kenya. In these few minutes, let me share some of the personal traits of our beloved father. He was a man of compassion. Just a few years ago, he was grieved to read in the papers of a son of one of his old friends who had got himself in a sticky situation. Even though his friend had long since passed away and he hadn't spoken to his son in decades, he called me and sent me to sort out the fellow's problems. This was our father, an elephantine memory and a compassionate heart. Through, throughout his years of service, 
He taught us to have tough feet, but keep a soft heart. Our father was a forgiving man. I remember the time he had bought a new car, and like many a young man, I could not resist the temptation to take it for a spin. Unfortunately, my driving skills then did not match my enthusiasm, and the new car was shortly no more. Dreading breaking the news to my father, I had, I had the cunning idea to carry a Bible in one hand <laughs> as I entered his room. My father, who of course had heard of the accident, took one look at me, shook his head, and burst into laughter. And that was the end of the matter. He had a wonderful sense of humor and a ready laugh. You have, you have heard, of course, of his passion for education for the poor and marginalized, for uplifting women to positions of authority. But little has been said for his love for the environment. I remember seeing him address the United Nations on the ozone hole years before climate change was in vogue. Encouraged tree planting on a national scale de decades before carbon footprint became an accepted issue. He was a true environmentalist. And one, just to recap, one of the, when I talk about his humor, there was one love or trait my father had, and that was his love for nyama. Alukwa him ze alukwa na pendanga nyama. And I'll remember na kumbuka alukwa na nimoeleza kwamba doctori tafadali mze doctori amekata. Akaniuliza unaona doctori apa? Hakuna kitu walikuwa nakuja katikati yake na nyama. Hasa kwa kikwetu tunaweza manga karasta, yani mbavu. He was a gentleman, not just in the impeccable manner that in his dress or the way he dressed, but in his attitude. His word was his bond. He valued loyalty and decency. He taught us to always try to do the right thing. Other than watching Billy Graham on TV, Mzee loved watching wrestling and was one of Big Daddy's ardent fans. He dislikes laziness, and he had no time for dishonesty or deceit. He believed in hard work and discipline. And his was the steady dedication of a lifetime of service. He dared to be great. And through toil, discipline, courage, and sacrifice, he spent his life in service of the country he loved. He dedicated his love and life to this country. But above all, he was passionate about God. And it is his faith that now gives us hope. In the words of that great hero of our faith, Dwight Moody, someday you will read in the papers that Daniel Toratij Arap Moy of Sacho Baringo is dead. Don't you believe a word of it? At that moment, I shall be more alive than I am now. I shall have gone up higher, that is all, out of this old clay tenement into a house. 
that is immortal, a body that death cannot touch, that sin cannot taint, a body fashioned like unto his glorious body. I was born in the flesh in 1924. I was born in the spirit in 1936. That which is born of the flesh may die. That which is born of the spirit will live forever. Father, you have fought the good fight and kept the faith. We will miss you. Kenya will miss you. Thank you.